I'm Leah from Island Sentero and welcome to my May favorites video. So I have some tarot, oracle, crystals, usual, and then a couple of little extras. I'll do um, non-tarot related books at the end, but uh, you can totally skip ahead if you want to, but I just wanted to share. So last month's favorite video, I had mentioned that my horse and I got third in an online show that we entered and I had also gotten third in March. And so I got the rosettes shipped out. Oh, aren't they pretty? So this is for March and April. And then we recorded our May round. So these were for a combined training. It was a round of dressage and a round of jumping. The two scores combined for your final score. So that was this class. And then for May, they were doing just a, a summer jumping challenge. So it's jumping only. So I'm really excited about that. We already got our May results back and we got a nice, lovely, lovely second. So I can't wait to get that ribbon in the mail. And then also May is the month of my horse's birthday. So <laughs> he, I've had him since he was two years old and he's so precious to me. And, um, I love him so much. Anyway, so we did a little party at the stables and I made this cute little collage. So him as a baby. <laughs> and that's his mom. So um, I've owned him since he was two years old. He turned eight this year. And every year I try to do something fun with my kids. We make him something and really, um, I guess a couple of years he's kind of eaten some of the things, but most of the time it's just a, so we can play with it and have some fun. So I will include a quick little video of us singing here. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Marlin. So that was a little clip of us singing happy birthday to him. For anybody who's worried, he didn't actually eat any of the icing or cake. It was just on the outside of his lip. He really just played with it and had a good time. And you can hear my kids just cracking up in the background. So it was a good day. And I honestly can't believe that I've had him since he was so little. And um, he he's come such a long way for me. And I've done all the training myself. I started in myself. And so to be able to compete, even just in these um, online type of shows, has been really fulfilling and uh, just makes me so proud of him. All right, enough of the horsey stuff, sorry. And let's get started on some of the decks that I've been loving this month. First, I have the Druid Craft Tarot. I'm just going to do this one real quick because it's a. I'm going to continue to mention it every single month, <laughs> probably. The honeymoon is not over, guys. I just, I love it. It's, oh, it's gorgeous, it's beautiful. And I really, I think it just goes with, you'll see, it, it just goes with some of the reading that I've been doing recently. And I think maybe that's why I'm being drawn to it because it just all brings it all together and it all just goes. So you'll see, but um, I love the earthy pagan feel from it. The art is amazing. And a lot of these cards, the depiction for each one, it's like everything that I need for that card ever. So quickly, the Druid Craft Tarot. I know I've mentioned it in a few others, so sorry about the duplicates. Okay, next I have the Terra Fauna. This is a really fun, fun deck. It's gorgeous. The animals are super cheeky and um, they have a lot of emotion. And so normally for an animal deck, you may feel like you're not getting that emotion, but there's something about the illustrations for this deck for me that really give me that emotion. And I just think it reads so beautifully. Oh, this is my favorite card. So yes, <laughs> Terra Fauna. Um, I love the otters. It's perfect for the suit of cups. There's gorgeous owls for the feathers, which is sword suit, sorry. 
in the major arcana it's all different animals it's really just the miners that have animals for the suits let's see oh here we go so it's foxes for wands or torches bears for rocks or pinnacles so yeah i just beautiful to use i've been so drawn to work with it and i don't know if it's the um the warmer days the longer days that spring starting to roll into summer a little bit feeling but the colors too the colors are really happy and positive oh, there's a really beautiful one so the terrafauna if you are into animal decks it, i really would recommend this one because there's just a lot of a lot of emotion and the illustrations are gorgeous and the next I have the Shadowscapes Tarot, and um, I felt like I hadn't used this in a little bit, maybe a little bit in spring earlier on a few months ago, and then I think it just kind of got pushed aside by um, maybe like the Druid Craft. But oh, every single time I come back to this deck, I just, I love it so much. We have a sort of kinship with each other, I feel, and even though this deck is so busy, to me it's really calming and really serene. So if I have a lot of things that I'm thinking about or just a lot going on, I really love to use this deck because it's just a pause and escape moment to just enjoy whatever card I've drawn. This is a really good one to sit with too and just flip through because the artwork is so stunning. So yes, I mean, I could show the entire deck for this one, Shadowscapes. I wish this one was as big as the Druid Craft. I mean, could you imagine? Oh, I mean, look at that. If this image was on this size card, oh, that would be amazing. <laughs> All right, so Shadowscapes Tarot. The next is sort of a, I don't want to say honorable mention, but it's just sort of I just unboxed it a couple days ago, so if you saw my unboxing, it's the, uh, or the walkthrough and first impressions, Tarot of the Abyss by Anatorian, and um, I've only had it for a few days, and I've just kind of been sitting with it and doing a few of the, um, you know, like, first few readings with the deck. How is our relationship going to be? How I view you? How you view me? And it really is just almost you know as detailed as the shadowscapes but it is so gorgeous you don't need the color and I think that was my one worry when I pre-ordered this deck was I don't have any other black and white decks in my collection so this was going to be the first one I didn't know how we were going to get on with each other but so far it's been beautiful um I think I said the word wow about a thousand times in my walkthrough so <laughs> I honestly was just at a loss for words oh this this oh, gorgeous hierophant. Some of the perspectives are a little different, like the way that you are looking at the card and the image that you're seeing, that perspective that is given is a little different. And I really appreciated that um, view on the cards where it has changed. So yes, I have a complete walkthrough and I'm sorry for how many times I say wow, but oh, it really is so, so gorgeous. And um, US Games has been doing a wonderful job. And to me, it feels very, very similar to um, Spirit Song or The Crow Tarot. So gorgeous, two-piece box. I'll show you the box. Really pretty with the little thumb holds. There's images on both sides. So try to do this. I'm really looking forward to using this one for the month of June. Then I just have one Oracle deck that I had been drawn to work with this month, and it is the Messenger Oracle by Raiden Phelan. And I don't know if this deck just was like, hi, hi, I'm still here, use me this month because it overheard me. No, I'm just kidding. It. I had been thinking I maybe wanted to get the new borderless sort of um matte version that just came out 
and so <laughs> I just I don't think I can do it it's it would be beautiful it is beautiful I've seen the comparison videos now and um, even some of the colors are a little different and I love that but I just feel like I've got so much uh, like love and effort and intention behind this deck and I, I couldn't shelf it. I would never get rid of it, but I couldn't shelf it just to use a prettier, I don't know, like the matte cardstock. These are so glossy. They can be a little sticky sometimes. I mean, mine's well worked in, but um, yes, and I'll probably continue to use this deck all through the summer. I really love all of the illustrations for this. It can be very deep and meaningful. The guidebook, if you choose to use it, is gorgeous as well. But yeah, so some of the coloration on a lot of these was like super different. They had added just a couple more cards in the new version. Um, and the backs are different too. I actually really like these backs. And then I also edged mine in a nice green that just matches just perfect. So, oh, I don't, I don't think I'm gonna get the other one, but I totally wanted to for a hot minute. Okay. So that's the Tarot and Oracle. Next, um, these two crystals are actually the same type of crystal, just a little different. And um, one of them I keep in the bedroom very close to me at all times. I will bring that piece out into the living room, set it on my little side table by where I prefer to sit. I may hold it in the evening time while I'm drinking some tea, watching TV, just relaxing. And then the other one I keep at the kitchen table where I also do homeschool with my kids and then where we all eat all of our meals. So. It is a Burmese Jade. I have two quite large pieces, but I love them. So this is the first one. It's kind of like a wedge. You can see the dark, but it has this like smooth divot and it's just so beautiful. So I'm gonna hold it real close so you can see. This bright green up in here is actually Imperial Jade. Burmese is considered more of this lighter, Oh, I just, it's very calming for me. It's very serene. It can be also a really good healing stone and it's excellent for dreams as well. That's why I keep this other piece in my room. And uh, this is the same Burmese shade. It does have quite a few flecks of the Imperial Jade in it, especially on this side. You can see the green in there, but this is a lavender version. This was a gift from my grandma. Oh, I just, we saw it at a crystal show and I was just in love with it. And then a week later she was like, oh, I went back. His name was Dr. His name's Dr. Tom. And uh, his whole house is just full of crystals. I believe he lives in the apartment above the garage and the rest of the house is just crystals on tables. It's beautiful and the energy is amazing when you walk in. So yeah, she's like, oh, I went to Tom's to pick up something etc etc she got me this oh i've been in love with it ever since so yes just amazing pieces i really feel like it helps with patience for me i'll be honest i have a thimble full of patience on my best day and a lot of that are reserved for my children and um it's nice to have to sit with to have around and also for dreams really really wonderful for dreams for me i used to have the overactive mind and not be able to um i could go to sleep but then if i woke up because i was thinking about something then i couldn't go back to sleep and having this in my room has completely gotten rid of all of that just very serene so these are the only two that i have to share i've really really been loving on them and um so yeah burmese jade Okay, so these last few things are just not non-tarot related books, but it kind of goes with, I think, why I've been loving the Druid craft so, so much. So the first one is, and I brought the first one to show you just as a reference, but I finished the Sword of Kings by Bernard Cornwell. So this is the book series that inspired the Netflix show, The Last Kingdom. 
if you haven't seen it and you're into that sort of historical action drama, I highly, highly recommend it. So this is the like the tie-in book. So this is the first book. It's called The Last Kingdom, just like the show. And um, this is the main character. Sorry, it's like kind of scratched, but so the main character's name is Uhtred and um, it's about his entire life. So you join with him in the beginning of the, it's from his point of view. You join with him in the beginning of the book when he's a little boy. And I'll just give you a quick premise because you would get this much if you just even read the description, if you went to watch the show or the back of this book, is that um, he's British and he lives in Northumbria and the Danish Norsemen are invading and he is saved or taken by them as a slave. So he's raised by them instead of by the Saxons or the people that lived in Great Britain at the time. So it's just beautifully written. It does get into a lot of um, action, sort of war-like scenes, but he does such a great job, this author, and um, gosh, I don't even know. So I think this is, this is gonna be like two, four, six, eight, 10, 11. So yeah, this is the 12th one of the series. So, so far the series on Netflix has four seasons and it's been two books per season. So these have been really fun. Like I started to say before I got distracted is that the author writes the fight sequences and the war scenes beautifully and they're easy to follow along. I know sometimes some authors it gets a little jumbled and you're like, wait, what happened to so-and-so? Or you're like trying to follow along or I end up like rereading some of those sections, but this is so nicely written. It's fluid. You can just read through it and you're like, oh my gosh, fight scene. Are they going to make it? What's going on? It's, it's really easy to read. So I recommend the books just because the writing is so wonderful, but then also the show, if you like that sort of Viking style. So that feels just so pagan and earthy and um, they talk about the Saxons and the Welsh that are there as well. So there's just different sort of cultures mixed and I really feel like the druid craft embodies some of that. So I feel like that's why I've been drawn to it. I've been drawn to the, the reading, the show. And so I think that's my infatuation with druid craft right now. So then that also brings me to the next book that I started is Blood Eye. So this came up as a recommendation because of reading these others by Bernard Cornwell, the Last Kingdom series. And this has like how in the front they do the little um recommendations from other author authors so this author bernard cornwell recommended this book so the writing style is a little different i'm about 100 pages in so far but i think it was just because i came off of reading this and then to go into this just sort of like reset but it's really good so far same sort of vibe um this one is more of a um sort of a outcast or unloved character from the town. So, so far it's been really good, but I'll let you know how it ends in the next video, or if I ended up liking it all the way through. I think there's three in that series, so we'll see if I end up reading them all the way. So that is all I have for May favorites, guys. Um, I know I put the little horse clip in of uh singing happy birthday but if you're interested to watch now i'll put in the round that we turned in for may that we ended up getting second for and um yeah so if you don't want to watch it i totally understand but if you do thank you so much if you've made it this far if you want to watch the horse stuff cool comment below if you're interested to see any of that and sort of these favorites videos it does take up quite a bit of my time every month and so it's hard not to mention it at all because <laughs> it's definitely a highlight yes non non tarot but still a life highlight for sure so thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this bye